before I introduce uh, my guest in front of me, I, I, I got to preempt this episode. Uh, prior to this, we were partaking of Ava. We had some uh, protocol and 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 and, uh, and and how we do culturally protocol with some oli and and we shared in Ava. So uh, the reason why I'm preempting it is because the Ava was was strong this morning, and uh, so uh, we'll get right into that. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff now. So I am humbled. I'm privileged. Uh, not only is he a kahu of uh, Uhi, but he is my dear friend and we've known each other since since Malo and long day, long hair days in dancing and, and entertaining. But uh, I'd like to welcome to the show Culturize Kahu Keli Imakua. How are you, brother? Hello, brother. <laughs> First of all, mahalo, mahalo to the boys uh, uh, from uh, uh, bringing the Ava and uh, getting us ready for this. All right. <laughs> it's, 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 it's gonna it's gonna go that way. That's so. the best way to start a day. <laughs> so mahalo for being here first of all and taking time because we know you guys drove all the way out from the west side uh, Makaha. So mahalo, mahalo for that. Absolutely. Okay, so I had to make sure about something. Besides uh, the Ava as a is, gift is, is Oh Aku, mahalo, mahalo. So again, another another cultural aspect aspect, another tradition uh, that uh tell us a little bit about uh Hokupu and, and going to people's homes or, or anywhere and, and why? You don't go empty handed ever. Nice. nice. And if somebody comes, you make sure you have something for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's absolutely custom to, to give, even if you don't have, you give. Mm -hmm. um, when you're coming and going, and that's just how we were raised like that. It's just like that, yeah. Never go to anyone's home, especially a kupuna. So, mahalo for this. You folks made this. No, actually, my wife, um, Sunny, got that. Nice. And she's like, make sure. I was like, okay, so I was going to add something else in my. <laughs> and she had that, and it's like, oh, that's perfect. I love this. Mahalo, yeah, mahalo, absolutely. mahalo. Uh, grew up on the west side, Makaha. You know, um, well, my, you're worldly, I should say. Yeah, definitely worldly. So my dad is from Denver. Mm -hmm. We are German, English from my dad's side. Wow. My mom is Hawaiian, mm -hmm. uh, Pia Hawaii, uh -huh. from Hawaii Island. We're from South Kona. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad met in the 60s. Boom, had us, sister, brother, then myself. Um, all of my school, everything. From Denver, bro. <laughs> i serious. Denver. Went to school in Denver. Wow. After I pulled high school, I came home. Wow. So the family was like, what are you going to do? I was like, oh. I want to go home. I'm done. I like I'm it. good. I like it. And and part of that was a, a lot of the things that I was doing in in Denver. Mm -hmm. I had some bad health and whatnot, and I just I just wasn't up for the cold anymore. Uh, um, and I think I think that's a good thing because you went out into the world and you you learned and you did things, and then you come back home, which is always we can always hoi right to yeah. come back home. Yeah. Uh, so I, I also also want to hope you as well. Um, and you know, with the CDC and whatever's going on in the world today, we and this is difficult. I got as, you. As, as, I as a Kanaka, right? It's <laughs> difficult, right? We, we, it, I call this um, aloha Tourette's, right? Because nowadays, because the the whole vid thing, everybody does this when they greet each other. Yeah, it's like oh, it's like oh no, cannot. Yeah, oh, can't. Oh, yeah, give the cannot. elbow bump. So this is because uh, we're people are watching. Uh, CDC says we will give it to you that way. Mahalo, brother. mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. And I will place this. No, leave, leave. Oh, I, I leave that off. that lehulu you have on, okay, you can okay, leave okay. them right there. Um, yeah, that lehulu. Oh, this lehulu was a is, gift. I had to wear this. Yeah, Hulali that is. Delima made it for me. Wow, and she's amazing. She's a kumuhula, or, or she's a mehula, right? right? She's um, a teacher, KS Maui, mm -hmm. um, just storied with things that her family does. And and for someone, if you see someone with a lehulu, it, it's autom you automatically know they're they're of some, you know, status. And and I love that. I and and one I was taught once that if you if you ever have a lehulu, and it was funny the way I was taught because I, I got scolding. I had a lehulu on, and somebody had given me a le, so I put that le on. And and the, what are you doing? You cannot call. Yeah, <laughs> lehulu is one of those that should not be accompanied by any other lay that uh, that's what i was thought so mahalo for that so you just put well, that on because i would feel guilty i would feel guilty um now uh school in denver came back home um even even while you're living on the continent uh was was culture in the home absolutely um i didn't realize that i wasn't white right until about 
11, wow. 12 years old. Wow. Um, when I looked at my dad's family, because majority mm-hmm. of them, blue eye, blonde mm-hmm. hair, beautiful family, uh-huh. very large. My right. dad is one of, um, he's number eight out of 10. Mm-hmm. And so I got plenty of cousins on that side, but majority of them are, are very fair. And then family pictures, and then get us guys that's not quite as right. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're already, a darkie, you already knew, <laughs> but I'm you know first generation half breed on my mom's side. You, um, you were you were khaki, I call it. Yeah, it was different, <laughs> khaki slightly, color. right? Uh, just a little bit, but um, you know one one of the things I remember because my dad used to talk pigeon, and so my school boys uh, would come over after the boys would come over and and we're doing stuff and then hey, these. Dad's telling me, hey, hurry up, bro. Go all, all, and, you know, <laughs> almost time for A. And, and you I know, love that. he's talking about, we can, we can, cow, cow, it's, 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 almost pow. You gotta go. And I'm like, Dad, you gotta stop talking like that because my friends think we're crazy. No matter where you are in the world I grew up, culture is always with you. That's what we do on Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state. Always providing you superior service with Aloha. So, I, I see, know, knowing Dad, I, I love it because he's, he's such a local man. Right, so he, and he's he's as local as local and Hawaiian as as he can be. Um, so, grow, even growing up in the country, so there was cultural aspects in in oh, yeah. the home. Um, was there this 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 desire that you wanted to return home that you, you because you didn't feel right? There? I didn't fit. Mm. I knew I didn't fit. Were you were you growing up, and and the culture? What what aspects of even even dad side that were that were instilled in you that that work ethics work ah uh, work ethics yeah you don't stop till it's finished mom's side hey, once the sun starts setting uh-huh. it's Paul Paul Hanna no working pop don't stop I said I look I look at it that because you have both Makua both your parents are very alpha right yeah. <laughs> right so and and I, your mom is she's that quiet Hawaiian lady that that speaks in silence yeah. right who was growing up who was who was the one that would pop. oh yeah pop. he he set down the rules everything <laughs> set down the rules hey you love your mom you uh-huh. respect your mom you listen to what she says you don't bad mouth or nothing and, and then he says, and then when you grow up and you have a girlfriend or, you know, even uh-huh. eventually a wife, you treat them as if they were your mom. You do everything in your, in your um, ability mm-hmm. to take care of that person. Uh, he says, eventually that's going to be somebody's mom. And do you want to see your mom being treated poorly? No. Wow. So that's how you treat that's a woman. In, that's intense. What was it, what was it like uh, living on the continent, knowing you didn't feel... A part of it, but you had a huge ohana. Your family was huge. What, what was what? It, what was that like? Well, I mean, is it was you just did it because that was what you were doing, or you just always had this desire? I need to hoi. I need to go back home. What was it like living? It was. It was. It was the need. Yeah. I mean, Pop had all kinds. He knew Sonny's Chili's mm-hmm. where he knew Don Ho. Mm-hmm. Mom danced for mm-hmm. Don Ho. Just right. all kind. Just records. And so we was always playing these old records, uh-huh. right? And then and then uh, in Denver had the. Um, I think it's Pete Lani Hawaiian Civic right. Club. So we weren't a part of them, uh-huh. but we did things with mm-hmm. them. My dad can make Kalua pig back those <laughs> right. days, like a hammer. So in Hawaii, he used to do the fireman's uh-huh. um, and the policeman's uh-huh. uh, ball. He did the emu. And everyone's like, how's this holly? Get away from the <laughs> emu. Right. Ah, he jumped in with uh, Officer Pinocchi, Herbert Pinocchi uh-huh. folks, and um, they taught him all that kind of stuff. So. Papa's hammer. He he yeah. is. He's. I, I love that man. When you now, when you came back home, uh, culturally, uh, of course you felt comfortable. What, what's one of the Namea Hawaii? What's one of the first things that you that you peeled to that you attached to? Uh, was it hula? Was it was it uhi? Was it uh, or was it everything? You just everything. Yeah. The sea. Mm. The sea. Absolutely missed that. And uh, being in the water was tranquil for me. Wow. Um, I could just, it didn't matter if I'm deep blue. Mm. Thing Whether I didn't be. like was fresh water. Wow. I, I was scared of fresh water. 
Why is that? You take me to the Muli Vai and it's dark. <laughs> I look at his side like, ooh. Because I know stories. You don't know what's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And Mo'os reside in and are yes. the caretakers of that fresh water. So I'm just like, See, okay, okay, now I don't feel too bad because every yeah. time I go to East Maui or Hana and, and, right? and, I, and I jump into a, 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 a freshwater pond, because it's if you've if you've ever jumped into a freshwater pond and you look down and open your eyes, it's just black. It's <laughs> you, you don't know somebody's gonna grab your leg, pull you down. You, you don't know those things. So that's interesting. You, you, fresh yeah. water. Fresh water scared me. Ocean water is your yeah. thing. Um, now you, Namia Hawaii, you you're versed in a lot. Um, hula. When did hula start for you? Um, early when I came. Um, Started with Kaulana Kasparovic. Wow. Yeah. So my tutus. That's a heavy hitter right there. Yeah, my tutu's um, younger cousin, uh-huh. uh, Tutu Malia Craver. Uh-huh. We call her Tutu Haoli mm-hmm. or Auntie Haoli. Um, that was a family name for, for her that uh, I would go and meet with her often. And then we sit with um, some other kupuna and kupuna uh-huh. from the Ihao, and they would just kuka. And so she introduced me, so I started dancing with Kaulana. So hula, hula was more of a choice or was it? Was. it? Nice. It was a choice because <laughs> I knew our family. So uh-huh. when I was in the fifth grade, I did, I did a, a, a report, a project uh-huh. was on our genealogy and whatnot. So I could whip out eight or nine generations of, 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 of our Mo'okuau Hau. Wow. And I didn't have depth on these people. Mm. Though. So when I came home, I started studying about who these people were. And it was through the family said, hey, you need to learn certain things. Learn to walk like a Hawaiian. So I start. Okay, go dance hula. We're talking uh, Namea Hawaii culture through the eyes of uh, Kelly Makua. So early, if you join us, we preempted our show with some some uh, pule and some ceremony. Before we do this part, it, really quick, it, can you explain just pule to us? A, a lot of people hear the word pule, um, prayer. Sometimes people they they they. Uh, they think it's religious. Um, f- as, as a Kanaka, as a Hawaiian, pule to us is if you can explain in, in your mana'o. In your oh, mana'o. It's, it's absolutely prayer, but it's a connection mm-hmm. to something that's greater than us. Mm-hmm. And so it can be an incantation. Mm-hmm. It, it can be invoking, asking something to come or somebody to come. Um, it's so many different things, it's hard just to say, oh, it's right. just a prayer. Right. Because we're paying respects to mm-hmm. somebody and mm-hmm. something greater than us. So like it's it. every part of our life. I like that. Um, you know, so we earlier we talked also about your lehulu uh, <laughs> that represents. You know, when you when you have a lehulu, you are you are of of a status. You you are you're somebody important. But even that, you know, when you're really important, when you have people behind you. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you have when you have a, a, a ohana and a team and and really quick, you guys see them standing next to us. Uh, introduce the, these brothers to us. To my left is Kamel Kohoia Kuaiva. Uh, honored to have him sit, and he's a cousin of mine. Um, interesting, I didn't know him growing up. Uh-huh. Met him afterwards, met him when he was in high school, and he's a great young man. And um, to his left is Kai Olohia Kili'ipakawa. Um, and he's a, a, a definite cousin, like closer cousin, mm-hmm. second uh, cousin for me from South Kona. Um, and we have several lines that all of us, we overlap with, all uh, Hawaii Maui um, is, our, is our lines. And I'm honored to have these men sit with me. And mahalo, mahalo, mahalo boys for being here. They, they obviously, they, they prepared the ava this morning. And um, I think, is that what we're doing right now? See, it's just the funny thing. These, they, they stand on the side and they're like, uh, they have this. Just smile, oh. yeah. It's <laughs> mino aka. It's just like. They, they have something. this, they have this skill and they know when our, our ava meter is going down. <laughs> and, and so kilo is, is just these observation skills. And, and, and that's, before I do, can, can you explain? Okay, so usually before we partake of ava, you know, finger, you know, bump. What, what, what is that for? So the, the, the cool thing that in, in Polynesia, mm-hmm. when we, when we um, have an agreement, uh-huh a contract, if you will, um, or just honoring through prayer um, our ancestors, we would have ava. Ava is like easy um, as a whole kupu Mm -hmm. offering uh, to any akua. Uh, We would, if you have the cup, Mm -hmm. 
you have the mic. The floor is yours. If you had something to say, you say it. When you're done, you always spin it because it, mm-hmm. it, it settles. Um, you would give a flick back mm-hmm. or even pour mm-hmm. back to the papa hunua, to the ground, the aina that we come from. And then over your shoulder, right and left side for your ancestors that walk with you. Mahalo and then you that. down it in one. <laughs> down one, it in one. One goal, right. or one, you know. It, it, it got all deep and it's like just down it in one. <laughs> and then you give them, brother. <laughs> So oftentimes, um, in in a definite formal setting, somebody would yell out "Pai mm-hmm. Kalima," so it's a double clap, and that is after you've, because it's now this is part of pule, this mm-hmm. is part of prayer, mm-hmm. because this is the blood or not the blood, but the the water of Kane, mm-hmm. our God of life, um, and so we would give prayer and then we would drink it, and so that is the pane sending it you know sending that prayer um then that's definite in in that sense and and there's there's depending where you're from there's also different protocols and different styles of 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 how they drink and how they how they do it so earlier when we prepared the ava uh that you folks did an oli yes right um is that a standard uh is that it's specific to you through Um, our our kumu uh-huh. um, that I'm so honored to uh-huh. be a, a part of, and have in my life um, from when I was young, like young, wow. out of high school, young, uh, Keone Nunes, mm-hmm. and um, he taught us different things about having ava and partaking in ava, and different areas do different things, uh, different families do different things. Uh, likewise, um, in saying that, we weren't generalized nothing was standardized it's because of the family or the area that you're from tendencies might be slightly different mm-hmm. um, but generally it was you had something to say you say them and before before you, you do that uh, again thank you for joining us right here on culturize the podcast uh, don't forget uh, hit the subscribe button uh, head up our website culturize.com uh, we are sitting with uh, Kelly Makua and we are partaking of Ava talking Ava uh, Hawaiian culture through the eyes of them. I, I learned, and correct me if I'm wrong, in, in, in your manao as well, um, I was always taught in, in, in the healing world that for Hawaiians, we never drink ava for recreational purposes. It was always a purpose and ceremony. And, and is um, and because we know a lot of the South Pacific do that. Um, is, is that. is that correct for you folks? Because we, when you do work, it's always, and that. All of that. A lot of some people don't realize that doing work is that's a ceremonial thing. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. So we, we you know, we we see people. Um, I'm not going to point finger at anybody or any uh, specific culture. We see them using five gallon bucket nowadays. Yeah. Soup ladle, whatever. Yeah. And they're they're consuming. If I was taught by by our kumu, uh-huh. if you remove the ava and use alcohol or vice versa, mm. it's an abuse. Mm. So wow. you're, you're losing the sanctity of uh-huh. what it was about. Um, if this is tied to prayer, mm-hmm. how are you going to abuse it consistently? Okay. You know, so if we're working on something, we'll have it because it helps us focus. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many healing properties of, this, uh, of this, this plant. So it's used in so many different ways. But just to sit and conk them back, and, you know, <laughs> right. that's not real. I like it. Go. That's not real. Okay, my brother. This did uh-huh. set up a little bit, so I will give it a mix. And this is about 12 ounces full right here. Wow. Yeah, this is a big one, man. When, when the, the, the apu <laughs> or the bow, when, when the big one comes out, you just sometimes you, you don't want to even look at the boys. You're just like, no, no, like, don't no, do it. It's not mine. Oh, it is mine. Okay. So, brother. Mahalo. Oh. <laughs> that was a, that's the one. Eola. So mahalo, mahalo, uh, brothers. Um, you know they're gonna go and say, "Oh, we'll wait another two minutes." Um, really, there's so much that we could talk on that. Yeah, and and, and, and we will. And, and what I what I do want to get into is is I love because you're so, you. I, I like to call you in a walking encyclopedia of of Namea Hawaii. Um, we talked Ava. We talked how you grew up. Uhi, um, 
first of all, what just namu haole? How what is uhi in in English? Uhi is literally a covering, mm. or even a, a shade being darkened. Um, so what you see on the body mm -hmm. is what remains after the tatao or kakao pra, uh, process. And that's not a tatao. Tatao is a verb. Ah, it's the action it's of the doing. Action, not so this is uhi. Mm -hmm. So um, we have old terms, um, uh, kakao moli, mm -hmm. kakao ili, kakao mm -hmm. uhi, mm -hmm. all qualifying terms for what we do. Um, it's not just a tattoo. When, when, what was it that, or that just inspired you? And you're like, wow, I want to, I, I think this is what I want to do. What, how old were you and when was that? <laughs> You're going to laugh. <laughs> I never wanted to do it. <laughs> I wanted to get marked. Uh -huh. And my family said, no, you need to learn. And they gave me a laundry list of things mm -hmm. to learn. So the idea was if I'm marked as Kanaka and representing the family, I, am, I need to be knowledgeable in these things. So that, it, that was my it's, journey. It's, it's funny. We, we laugh, but we know from a cultural standpoint that's usually... It. It's like we never want to do things. You're, you're, you're chosen, and it's not our choice. Uh, if you want to see the extended version, and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about uhi and, and kakao and, and keli makua, uh, culturize.com, YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are talking Namea Hawaii, the culture through the eyes of keli makua, and uh, we're going to get a little bit deeper into uh, kakao and tattoo and, and what you think you may know, and uh, we're going to do that right here on Culturized. <music> So if you're joining us right here, Culture Rise, the podcast on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, comment down below. Um, we're talking story with my very, very dear friend, uh, Kahu of, of Uhi. And the name of the... Now, be before, we, before we get into how you started, um, the name of your pa and, and where the, the, your group, your Hui. Name, name my pa mm -hmm. after my sixth generation grandfather. Wow was the last tattooist of our family. Wow. Um, things were changing. Mm -hmm. He was born 1800, like a turn century 1800. Um, and the, the idea was Christianity came in mm -hmm. 1820. So with that, you know, changing of times. So his son was taught, but did not keep mm -hmm. going with that. Um, his name um, was Huno Huno Holani. Wow. And that Huno speaks of a relationship to Holani. At birth, he was gifted over in the, in the practice of Kane, priesthood, um, and was taught several things of, of that. So my teacher uh -huh. is wonderful, uh -huh. gave me so many life lessons uh -huh. over decades, 26 years as a student. He said, it's time for you to go. Wow. And I, I resisted. I dug my heels in. I'm not <laughs> going anywhere. You're the boss. You're always going to be the boss. Right. You're the master that rewoke in this, this mm -hmm. practice, and I'm good at sitting at your feet forever. And um, I'll just help you mm -hmm. train the young boys. And he's like, no, you gotta go. And um, so being out on my own, um, I, he gave me the title, titled me as um, a ka'uhi, which is, wow. is a title of somebody who does uh, the tattooing. And so with that, um, I had to come up with my own name mm -hmm. for, for my halal or my pa. So it, I, I took a family name. And it, it was just, it was a right fit. It was almost as though that's, you couldn't even create one. I couldn't. That's just. I, literally, I couldn't. I had yeah. brain freeze. I was like, ah. <laughs> it was like, nobody. Did, did, it, yeah. did it just come to you? Like it just made sense? Oh, yeah. He's the last one. Yeah. It's got to be Hulo Hulo Um So now you have your own pa. Let's now go back to, you didn't want to do tattoos. You didn't. I just wanted to be marked. Right. But he was uh -huh. my kumuhula, uh -huh. and he had been had had several informants that gave him information mm -hmm. and knowledge of this practice. Looking around, it's like uh -huh. wow, you only get shops, <laughs> and they're trying to copy and make up, and they give a good spiel, and everybody likes what they got to say, and they go that way, and it's false. Mm -hmm. Some patterns don't belong with other mm -hmm. patterns. The placements are wrong, you know, just all kinds of things. So is it fair to say, you know, at that time, it was, it was just more aesthetic back then? 
It was. Yeah. It was aesthetic. And for me, I just wanted to have something to represent our family. And I knew what our family was about because I'd been studying it, you know, forever. Wow. And, and the more I studied, the more I knew, the more I knew I didn't know. Wow. And it was crazy. That's intense. The more I studied, the more I didn't know. I, I like that. Um, so when, when you started getting into, what, what's one of the first things that you remember when it came to Uhi? One of the first lessons, one of the first, what was it? Reference. The, wow. So it, it wasn't just, I'm going to go look at a, a, yeah. a, a design or a mark or something like that. Um, there was a lot of research. What was so? How's this? I say I, I fell into this uh -huh. because my kumu right. was my hula teacher, and he said, "Hey, what you gonna do after practice?" Oh, nothing. What you need? You like help me? I said, wow. "Of course." He said, "Bring a change of clothes." Okay, after <laughs> practice, freshen up, right? Uh -huh. Clean up, and then and I go with him. And at th that time, we would go to your house or mm -hmm. an individual's uh -huh. house and do work at their house for them, and. Uh, he, I listened to his 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 his, his, mm -hmm. his talk with mm -hmm. these folks, and then they talked about genealogy. They talked about different aspects of the genealogy, strengths, weaknesses, whatnot. And then he had a pattern on a paper, and and um, oftentimes it would be a quick sketch, mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, so that that was my involvement. That's how I got in. Mm. I didn't seek to get in. I was just there. You were just there. I was there. That, this is, I, again, very cultural, right? Kumu says, come just hang out with me. Yeah, come sit. Let's head down, okay. Because he knew your kilo skills, and, and there was going to be a moment that you were like, hmm, maybe, maybe I, I got to do this. What, was there that know. moment? Or, I don't or? know, honestly, but I was an OP. Yeah. So my mom's brother, folks, I was an OP. Uh, Tutu, how mm. old uh, Malia Craver, uh. I was an OP. Um, I just was always stuck on their side and just they needed help. I was there. I Everything wanted to hear the stories. Going in, going in, going, going in. Just, just eat. I tried to be everywhere mm -hmm. and, and that spread me thin. So at a certain point, I had to draw back and just focus on certain things. And um, so I knew our family came from Lua Masters mm -hmm. and, and Hula Masters. Um, and we have a, a, a fat warring line or lines mm -hmm. from Hawaii Island and Maui. So I'm like, I gotta do hula. <laughs> yeah. Hula was the form work right. for the Hawaii uh -huh. martial arts. I gotta right. do it, and I already study martial arts, and I've been studying. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do it. He gave me a pattern that hadn't done been done for maybe 150 years, and his reasoning was because tattooing was outlawed, mm. but we didn't have wars anymore, mm. so there was no sense was, in using right. a pattern that spoke of war. Mm. And so the interesting thing with that was. I was so honored because I was kind of this guy that was young and I was just, <laughs> you want to go? Okay, let's go. And, you know, whatever. And, and it was just that, that idea that I'm, I'm wearing something that my ancestors wow. might have had. Wow. And I, I want to say they yeah. did. You know what I mean? Um, and so that was just huge. And so that intrigued me more to study mm. more. Everything just kind of lined up. Uh, so it's not just... Oh yeah, here let me go see what this pattern means, and I'm just gonna go put it on you. Um, what's what's? And it's a long process, but if you can if you can kind of explain that process all the way up to I mean, because it's not just marking somebody. There's yeah. so many different aspects of we from from only what I understand, but even genealogy, understanding mooku ohau, understanding yes. genealogy that comes with. What other things come with? You have to. Outside of just tattooing, what you have to know as a kahu in, in, in Uhi. One is genealogy. Because I think you, you can, I can sit with you and listen to you speak of mooku ohau all day. Like you just, your brain is amazing to me. Was that difficult for you to research? Research is difficult. Yeah. Because I'm not computer literate. Right. Um, going through school, I graduated mm. back in the 80s. And so computers wasn't a thing. Books and and yeah. I never went to school mm. afterwards. After high school, I ended into the uh -huh. job force. Um, I, I figured, okay, I'll join the service, mm. and they can, then I can use that, that bill to go to school because I, I, I wasn't rich. Mm. I, I couldn't afford mm. I didn't know about grants and all of these dif different things. But I had cancer in the ninth grade, and that followed mm. into all through high school. 
And so I missed a lot of school. My grades were terrible. My GPA was bad. It wasn't, it wasn't sexy. I was like on a roll all the way, 3-0, mm -hmm. all the way through up until I got cancer. Wow. Um, and then when it just you were in ninth days. grade? Ninth grade. When you had it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Th um, so, yeah, it was just changed everything. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go military. Uh -huh. And then um, when, when I talked to the guy, he saw the scars on my mm -hmm. forehead, saw the scar uh -huh. on my neck. Uh, and he's like, what is that? And I go, oh, I had an operation. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, what happened? I go, well, I had cancer. Well, what happened? Took out half my lung and three ribs. Oh, wow, what else happened? Well, my back came crooked. Mm -hmm. So they took bone out of my hip and, and fused uh, C7, T1, 2, and 3. And I still got a little bit issued, uh -huh. but, you know, I'm good. And, and then he's like, you can't go to the service. Nobody will take you. And wow. I was like, wow. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> wow. I'm working. Right? Yeah. Well, it, but see, what, what's amazing, though, is it's not a lot of people know that about you, but you, you've had the, this, and, and your body has changed, but yet you went into the, the craziest work world. Craziest work. Like iron. You're, you're like on buildings. You built half a the A lot buildings. of these high-rises yeah, out here? Yeah, you built. I made them. I became an iron worker, and I don't know how that happened. I saw, <laughs> somebody <laughs> said, hey, they're hiring. The union's hiring. Okay, I went down and applied. I applied for Hawaiian Electric. Wow. Year and a half waiting list. Uh -huh. I needed the I needed wow. money because I moved home by, mm -hmm. by myself. But this, was... but the same time. So now you you you're recovering from cancer. You don't make it to the military. You go into the the craziest job force as an iron worker, and the toll physically on you is is amazing because you you did it. But at the same time, you're studying. Uhi. I study. Uh, wow. I Wait, never when? had personal life after work. It's just. You study. Because add to that, now you and I, we, we, we used to dance shows. It, right. and, and, we, and you remember we grew our hair long yeah, when it was not we, yeah. a thing to have long hair and dance we, we were. I, I, I think back to our days, and, and hopefully nobody remembers, but um, long hair, malo, very kue. Front flap, malo only, <laughs> yeah, no back flap, or else no flap at all, pu ali style. Uh, what what, what right? were we thinking back then but we're gonna to have to bring back malo mondays we'll start with the boys um <laughs> so you were doing all this what and studying uhi so about how many years did it take from when kumu first said i want you to go change your clothes come with me sit down um to having kumu say i think you're ready i i, I think you know well not i think he said he knows that he's going to give you this title how many years? How many? Well, I was graduated after twenty six years of a student. Wow, twenty six, yeah. and and that amazes me because you, you're you're going into this. I'll, I'll say, for lack of a better word, profession. Twenty six years of studying, and it's funny because sometimes not to not to down doctors, but doctors go to school for like ten years. <laughs> no, no, they cut you open. I'm still learning, bro. Twenty six. I'm I, still learning. I love twenty six years, still learning, but you have the title. What did that feel like? To, to intimidating yeah intimidating Be your first your first solo by yourself pakahi tattoo do you oh. do you remember how old or what it was let's see so we started out mm -hmm. with machine mm -hmm. and then it was really apparent that we needed to switch to traditional mm -hmm. tools we knew about them we knew how they were held and whatnot but we didn't know how to make them and mm -hmm. use them so in 96, uh, I went to uh, Apia, mm -hmm. Western Samoa, with Keone for the Pacific Arts mm -hmm. Festival. We met uh, Patelo Suluwape, mm -hmm. and he is the head of the, the Suluwape family in Samoa, but the older brother, Paulo, mm -hmm. was the head of the whole family clan. Paulo became Keone's teacher wow. in teaching this. And um, so Keone had a few, few years mm -hmm. under his tutelage before he had passed. And and suluape is in in it's a Samoan word, um, is that is that equivalent to a kahu of uhi? It's a family name. Oh, okay. Because a lot of people see. Uh, I, I'm glad we talked about because some people throw that word around suluape mm -hmm. and they just think oh automatically you're a tattoo person. Oh, okay, okay. And I hear and I, some people are like no no that's that's a family name. So it is a family name. It's and, a family name. Wow. So you guys learned. So there's Suluwape and Keone, and then passing down to you as a kahu, um, intense. So we were taught from Paulo's toolmaker, wow. Tamati, uh -huh. came from New Zealand, because Paulo had moved to New mm -hmm. Zealand. Tamati came, 
he um, stayed for a, a period of time, taught us how to make tools, mm-hmm. 2004 is when I, when we all started actually using the tools uh-huh. 2004 were the tools because i see your tools now and I, I i watch the boys make is it it's in one i look at it it's an art form is it that meticulous or were again were hawaiians just overachievers and we were like no we're gonna we're gonna take this and we're gonna make this thing beautiful we're gonna make it sexy we're gonna make it because i look at your tools and it's like it's museum pieces how much not a lot of people realize that all these tools are handmade by everything you. wow handmade. um the idea was what we were shown and what the Samoans uh-huh. were using at that time was it was beautiful mm-hmm. but certain aspects wasn't real mm-hmm. to me right from if you, you're looking from a native eye mm-hmm. um so with that i said okay i was asking Keone, what what, what did they do to skip mm-hmm. this one step that the Samoans right. was doing that they taught us because we didn't have nails. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to use a nail in my tool. <laughs> right, right. And, uh, you know, so little by little we're talking about things. And he studied. He's gone to college. But he grew up in a time frame where he was around. There's ample mm-hmm. kupuna right. at that time. And so he's, uh, you know, a lot of ike was, was shared just in everyday life. So we would talk about different things. And, um, and then he said, try this. And I try it. And it worked. And little by little, I changed what the tool actually we were shown mm-hmm. to what we actually use now. And I want to say, and, and Kumu even said it, this is more like what our tools look like. And the, the way I lashed mm-hmm. down the tool, the lashing was more up on the top. Mm-hmm. And, and that lashing is, you can equate that to a, a hale, to mm-hmm. a house, or even a nava'a. But if we're striking over here, mm-hmm. that wood's going to fray and bust up. I brought the lashing down. Wow. Everybody does that nowadays. Like not only in Hawaii, uh-huh. but outside of Hawaii also. Because we have social media. People can see pictures. And everybody copies. When it comes to... See, not, that's why I'm very intrigued. Because not only are you just having to to put a mark on somebody, you have to be versed in mo'oku ahau genealogy. You have to be versed in making tools. You have to be versed in, in understanding just a lot of namea Hawaii, uh, even, in, even down to ava. When it comes to designs, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it, you, the, the person receiving it, they don't usually pick it, right? I cannot come yeah. to you and be like, yeah, I like, I like some triangles and, and this and that. You can do that. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work like that, right? It's not real. <laughs> what, how does how does that process work? If 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 I seek you out, first of all, I know we had a conversation uh, before about there's 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 the steps, there's protocols to approaching you, right? Um, and can I just say that you know sometimes the worst thing to do is if somebody calls me and says, hey, you know the guy, the the one guy he does tattoos. Well, you can call him for me. <laughs> right that, that's not how you do it right it, my kids get that <laughs> you see, your kids get, hey you can talk to your dad you can talk to your dad they're like no the proper way is just coming to see you just come with the whole kupu um and so what are, what are the how does that work if somebody comes to sit down with you and say i, I want a tattoo reach out mm-hmm. text so my ig mm-hmm. kili underscore uh, makua has um in inside the you know whatever it says uh, about what I am or uh, whoever it says no DMs mm. people DM me on a regular I'm like <laughs> you should change it to put DM me I got I got <laughs> email going. I got my uh, cell phone I uh, got the text message for the cell I got Facebook that I haven't been on in you, you know what you forever. gotta put just change it put I grew up in the eighties yeah, reach me just <laughs> just reach out you know and and so it's it's hard so it's not, so if like if I saw you on a Monday. And I call you Monday morning. It's not yeah. like I'm going to show up Tuesday and just get no, something, right? No, not at all. How not does, at all. What's that process? What, so, what? to be honest, watching Kumu, um, he would ho'ole uh, so many people. Wow. So, ho'ole is to, you know, um, refuse right. people. And imagine um, you watch football before uh, days, right? Yeah. Heisman Trophy. Yeah. The guy's <laughs> carrying the ball and he's always stiff-arming somebody. And he would stiff people right and left because he would say they're not ready. Wow. So, in that thought of are they ready or are they not ready, do they come mm. respectfully? Are they mm. humble? Mm. How do they ask? Um, what is the reason behind being marked? Okay, so being marked, we call that ho'omana. Mm. They're going to instill mana in this individual in, in this archaic fashion mm. that was done with a right and a left hand 
because we're recognizing a birthing process. Do they understand that? Do they uh-huh. got all kinds of work uh-huh. from machines? Right. And um, that's why we switched out from machine. Yeah. And is it all over any kind of places? Because Kumu would say the first work needs to be foundational. Mm. And that's because nowadays we're removed from our ancestral wisdom and tendencies. So we have to go back yeah. and put foundation. So we walk with foundation and then we grow upon that. So if somebody, and this has happened, a guy that was an awesome, and you know the guy, <laughs> awesome dancer, handsome, whatever. Yeah. He, come, he, he went on vacation uh-huh. a few times. Three strikes, <laughs> three strikes, right. right? And then that vacation time. And brother called me, he said, Brian, like you blast my face. And I'm like, whoa, huh, uh, does that mean blast? Right. I study martial arts, bro. I'm gonna look and see <laughs> if I can get the uh-huh. angle and I'm gonna crank them, you know what I mean? Or that's what's in my head. Uh-huh. And, and it's just the vernacular. Mm-hmm. And that's a new word I've been using in this last right. month, vernacular. The vernacular. Yeah, and it's my always, boys always, are laughing at me. Always, <laughs> it's always, right? <laughs> it's always good when the young, the, 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 the young guys say, oh, these old guys, they know some big words. Huh? <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's this idea, mm. do they come prepared? Right. And most people don't. Yeah. So in the beginning, people really didn't have any understanding. Yeah. And so Kuma would just hold right. them forever in a life. Um, nowadays, it's, it's a little bit faster. And... We've had people like, so if, if I know you and I know you mm-hmm. and your background and what you're about, you, you walk a really nice straight line. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not dibble dabbling in chemicals right. and, and you're right. not got um, a million kids strung out everywhere that mm-hmm. you don't take mm-hmm. care of. You take care of your, your responsibilities. That's outstanding. So that person would step forward first before wow. somebody that doesn't know their genealogy, doesn't mm-hmm. know where their family's mm-hmm. even from. Oftentimes, the genealogy is tied to the aina. Is there times when, you know, you, you, you're only somebody, but is, is there times where um, you actually tell somebody, listen, you're not ready, and I want you to research. I oh, want yes. you to do this. Absolutely. So you, it, but is there also people that you say, just, uh, no. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. Wow. And, um, and it's, it's just like, wow, this guy is so abrasive, and mm-hmm. he doesn't even know he's abrasive. Mm. He, he needs help. And so sometimes we'll, out of, um, I don't know if it's that I, I feel bad for him, mm-hmm. that I just want to sit and talk with him to try and give him a little bit insight. Because sometimes people, um, they, they weren't raised up with the right. best of conditions. Right. So, you know, yeah. we need the help. Uh, when somebody says, eh, I like your tribal. Oh, bro. <laughs> what, what it spins my brain. <laughs> Serious, that spins my brain. I'm like, tribal? <laughs> Right. So my wife is from Maui. So uh-huh. we're in Maui, right? And this lady comes by. Oh, that's beautiful. She's talking about my uh-huh. Hawaii. What tribe are you from? Oh, Hawaii. Wow. Yeah, Kanaka. Wow. And she's like, what? <laughs> Kanaka. <laughs> like, okay, I come from a time frame where Kanaka means Hawaiian. You know, and so she's asking me and this lady's looking at me like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> you, like, you oh. hear all these, these, these words that come out about somebody sees you know they'll see the boys they'll see you they'll see and say, oh those are nice tribal markings or tribal tattoos um what would you for somebody that that doesn't understand what well, the easiest thing would it just be oh these are uhi absolutely wow absolutely and then hey, what does that mean uh-huh. oh and, and kumu <laughs> would say tell them what you want to tell them wow but you don't have to tell right. nobody anything because it's yours mm. and and you own it you it belongs to you and um but to be honest we tell people exactly that but you don't have to tell people but just know if you make a post on social media and you speak on it people see especially if they tag me um or whatnot people that follow me will often see what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and then they'll go look and if and i'm followed by a lot of tattoos and they copy yeah. Even backyard tattoos. I, I always, there's, there's an olelo no iao, and I, I can't think of the, the, the olelo hawaii, but it, it says to the effect in, in English that don't dry out the bones of your ancestors. Absolutely. Right? It, it basically meaning yeah. like, like with uhi. Kala. Like the, just, yeah, just don't, don't talk about your, your markings to someone because you don't really know what their intention is right. of, of, of kind. So it's not just based off of genealogy, though. No, it can be based off of the individual. So Kumu would speak on, it can be based off of a person's bloodline. Mm-hmm. It can be based off of the aina, the mm-hmm. land that they, the family was tied to. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes, 
Miloli'i, mm-hmm. South Kona, like very South mm-hmm. Kona, right on the border of Kau. If you've been there, there's hardly any fresh water. It's all a, a lava flow down. It's a fishing village. It's been a fishing village for centuries. If you come from there, you're in that industry. Sorry. Mm. You're not a mahi ai. Right. You don't have <laughs> lo'i. It's not real. So if, you, if, you're, if I'm walking through the mountains and I see somebody with an uhi that has something to do with the ocean, it's... Well, now they might be because they're, they're looking to harvest mm. something that they uh, might need. Okay. So mind you now, the strongest natural fiber was found in Hawaii, Olona. Mm. And that's grown in the uplands. Wow. You know, so it might be that they are peely to that. I uh, see I could I could sit forever and ever in a day with you and, and talk Namia Hawaii and and, and and dive and I, I love I always love diving in, into into your into your your lolo into your brain, into your no no. Um, if you're joining us, culturize.com is the website, YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe channel. You want to know more about Uhi Namea Hawaii, uh, don't call me. You can comment. I'll get you in touch with him. <laughs> uh, do it the right way. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for being here. Uh, we'll bring the boys in one more time. Uh, say mahalo to the boys. Kapa huno huno holani is the pa. Uh, Keli Makua, Kahu of Kauhi, tattooing and, and marks. Uh, can can we uh, close this out? Yes, absolutely. We don't, we don't have to finish the whole bowl, do we, everybody? Oh, it's <laughs> going to be a little bit to do that, but okay. still get some action. All right, whoa. <laughs> so again, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, Culturize.com is the website. We are going to uh, uh, wrap up this this uh, episode with Kili Makua. Mahalo to the boys, Kamea and Kai, for taking time out. Uh, it, it's it's a long journey from Makaha, and as we did in the beginning, holy moly! Wow. So again, mahalo for joining us. This is Culture Rise, Keli Makua, and uh, mahalo for the Ava, mahalo for the whole kupu. Thank you very much, Culture Rise.